Guess it's later. The Rhythm Heaven series had its beginnings in Japan, as you may know. If you didn't, now you do. It's the last GBA game Nintendo directly put out, releasing on August 3rd, 2006. Before I forget, I'll be using the unofficial English translation just for convenience. You can find it somewhere. And now, have a formal reading of the buttons you use in these rhythm games. A. That's a pretty good one. I like A. B. That one's a bit supplementary, but it gets the job done when you need it. The, the D-pad? What do you mean, the D-pad? How do you go from, in some instances, six buttons to touch controls back to two buttons? Nah, but in all seriousness, all this means is that each Rhythm Heaven game I've talked about so far has vastly unique controls. Yes, Fever uses buttons too, but you're like using both hands in this one. When's the last time I could say I've used both hands in a Rhythm game? Rockers 2? Anyway, let's talk more about my left hand's best pal here with some examples. One use for the D-pad is simply as an alternative to the A button, like in Rhythm Tweezers. In this one, you gotta pluck hairs from onions and potatoes? All manner of vegetables, really. You got short ones you gotta pick out with short taps, and long and curly ones you really gotta pull for. Like I said, the D-pad is functionally similar to the A button, but you still need it when there's a lot in succession. And man, is there gonna be a lot in succession. Don't forget the classic Rhythm Heaven tricks of taking away your sight to throw you off. Thanks, Remix 8. Nice to see malevolent behavior at the root of the series. I'm sorry. Well, that was a nice supporting role for the D-pad, but how's about a lead? Sick Beats has that for you. This one is weird. You have four chances to skewer these germs, and that's as long as they don't zip around. With that being the case, it's kind of like you have multiple chances here for each germ. That's how I see it, anyway. You could see it as varying degrees of failure. Oh, me? Hang on, are those three-pronged forks? Four of them? Are you telling me they use lab equipment and forklifter? It says here in the lab safety section for the University of Iowa website that, and I quote, glassware used for laboratory operations should never be used to prepare or consume food or beverages. I'm appalled. Air bed isn't even considered glassware. According to this list of glassware I found on Wikipedia, there's no forks on here, let alone any with three prongs. You aren't even close. Listen, pal, this is about as close as I'm gonna get. I've been after that three-pronged fork industry for too long. This is a video about Rhythm Heaven. All right, one more example for those D-pad games for now. How about one where you just have to use both? No two ways about it, just how it is. Gotta use A, gotta use a direction. That's polyrhythm for you. This game hops a couple of rods around in a factory, and, uh, yeah, it feels really good. The first one is kind of simple, though. You don't even start using both buttons at once until around halfway through. Guess they wanted to keep it easy since they, uh, they don't give you practice. You know, for this new game you wouldn't have played before. Why? This isn't a change you should have to make. You should just have this consistently. Hell, most games within Rhythm Tengoku have practice. Rhythm Tweezers had practice. Sick Beats had practice. Oh my god, this is me after finding out Sick Beats doesn't have it either. I'm fuming! And this is most certainly not the only one without it. Let's talk about some more horseshit. Quiz show! I got a medal on my first try. Not the point. Let's see what happens if I f*** up in the practice. Never mind. Just don't give me practice at all if this is the kind of thing you're gonna pull. Alright, in all fairness, not counting sequels, the only other game to mix practice is Ninja, but, like, you see why this is a problem, yeah? It's not gonna take players too long to figure out the controls and timings and all that, but this shouldn't be a problem in the first place. You know what else shouldn't be a problem in this game? Dying, kicking the can, checking out, pushing up daisies, giving up the ghost. And you may ask, you may have such a simple, naive question like, 
Why would you die in Rhythm Tengoku for the Game Boy Advance? That's what I want to know! Anyway, Nightwalk has a hard lose condition if you miss one of these jumps. Instant try again! And late into the game, there's pits everywhere! You have to stay consistent, lest you want to be swallowed by the darkness, never to be seen again. Okay, but hear me out here. I certainly don't agree with the cruel and unusual punishment going on here, but it does create some big stakes, especially when every jump matters and the music just starts taking you somewhere. It kind of creates this tension that can only be replicated when you're going for a perfect. Uh, the the hey, who wants to learn about calligraphy? WHAT DO YOU MEAN THERE'S A SECOND NIGHT WALK?! If you know anything about me, it's that I'm a sucker for good penmanship. Also, that my name is Erb. Now, one of these statements is a lie. Ah, well, you don't have to care about that fruity-ass handwriting to get into the surprisingly one of the most compelling games here, Power Calligraphy. I think it's, once again, the sounds going on here. The music, too, and eventually the dancing guys here really get you pumped to write Japanese symbols. That brings up an interesting conversation about the contents of these rhythm games, though. It definitely doesn't seem like they had any other audience than Japan in mind when they made this one. Games like Bonodori, Hanabi, and yeah, Power Calligraphy here don't really have us English speakers in mind. Of course it's not a bad thing, though. It just gives this game a bit of its own character. And now I present to you the games I couldn't talk about for long enough lightning round. Ready, go. Samurai Slice. The speed kind of gradually quickens and bombs out at the end. Makes you feel like a badass in quick parts, while making the slow parts feel so deliberate. Sneaky Spirits. Kind of like a better version of Exhibition Match and Fever now that I look back on it. Especially the sequel. Same idea as Samurai Slice, but the speed kind of fluctuates more here. Slamming these spooks into an abode of the living is gratifying. Space Ball. This one's groovy, man. Hearing that bat strike the ball away is serotonin incarnate. I live for this stuff. It honestly breaks through the standards of this rhythm heaven's offerings, and it's just flat out great. Clappy Trio. I really wanted to talk about this one on its own, but I just didn't have much to say. It'd just be me talking about how great the music is, how much I love these sounds, the faces these guys make when you f*** up, the worst, really. All the makings of a good rhythm game. Toss Boys. I don't like this one. Well, I didn't appreciate that one bit. Oh, uh, sequel games! Space Dance is such a cool game, and I think the fellows making this game knew this since it's, uh, in half the remixes. Love Space Dance, don't want to talk about it though. I've always liked Cosmic Dance more. Instead of this Wario looking at Space Gramps, who is still awesome, we have Cosmic Girl. I, uh,. I love her design a lot. I want to wear her hat. I'll admit, the command still takes some getting used to for me. This isn't exactly my most played Rhythm Heaven, but I still adore this rhythm game. The music, the background, the swingy tempo, and everyone's designs really make this one feel distinct from the original. Which I kind of wish I could say for some other sequels here. Oh right, the background! Man, does it feel powerful when it just rushes past you after you pull off that P -p -p punch I don't know what to say to cap off this section. In this playthrough, I've really gotten a new appreciation for Bond Dance. Bonadori is a good game, I liked it, but man did Bond Dance make me work for that opening. The inputs here are honestly a lot to get used to, and like I said, I'm not exactly used to this rhythm heaven game, so I appreciate having a stiff challenge once again. The scenery looks like birthday cake flavor. The claps are super satisfying, and the inputs aren't really what you'd expect. Every time the singer says, pun, you do a clap. That's all there is to it, but it gets pushed about as far as it can here. The combination of once again swingy tempo and the quick succession of the later ones makes you feel like a real lug nut for messing up. But once you get the hang of it, you feel so powerful. Glad this one grew on me. Alright, this one's iconic. Turbo Tap Trial is an insane tap dancing sesh with these snazzy monkeys. I'm just now realizing that all three of the sequel games I picked are about dancing. Like with the space dances, they play with the background here. After a certain point, it just scrolls faster and faster until capping out here. If you miss, it stops on a dime. What a strange way to motivate you to do well. 
Getting a bunch of inputs right in this one makes you feel powerful, since you're letting our tapping trio here seemingly soar higher and higher. And yes, I always go on about the music. Arb, shut up about the music already. But it's good! It's so good! It's part of why this one makes you feel powerful, and the taps sound like percussion to complement it. Ah, good old remixes. Never fail to blow me away. Oh, well, about that. I find the remixes in this game to be middling. The format of the stages and the remixes in this game might have something to do with that, I'm not sure. But I'll explain anyway. Unlike the other games, Tengoku gives us eight sets of six. Five normal stages and a remix at the end. Oh, and, 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 Remix 6 is the culmination this time. Not the last one like it always is, just another way this series breaks established rules while also being the first game. Anyway, the remixes go like, uh, 3 is kinda cool, I happen to like a lot of the stages in this set. 5 is pretty neat, but it kicks my ass so I hate it and it's evil. 7 is a stitched together mess of the first 3 remixes. It genuinely confuses me how they made these pigs for a skin in Tap Trial, but you never see them again outside of this remix. 8 is probably my favorite, business as usual for the 8th one to be one of the best, but because of this unfortunate position it has being the last stage in the game, it's a bit underwhelming. Karate Man sections are mad satisfying though, so whatever. As for extra stuff, there's this drum game in the same vein as the side content Rockers has in the DS game. I couldn't be asked to do it, but it's there. None of it matters though. We have Mechanical Horse! Yeah, Mechanical Horse! Woo! Well, that was most certainly a first entry. I'm sure lots of fans, especially outside of Japan, aren't gonna play this one first. And that's fine and reasonable, and I think you'd be nuts to do so anyway. Your first Rhythm Heaven experience is gonna be magical, but I think you'll get a lot more out of it if you just play the other two I talked about. There's still plenty of fun to be had with this game. It's still absolutely worth playing if you want to see this series roots. You're telling me there was there was a, a, a better piece of evidence laying right in front of me. Mm -hmm.